Good afternoon. Good afternoon. And welcome as we celebrate the third Sunday in Ordinary Time. We welcome the people who are praying with us at home. stand as we sing number 688 in your gather hymnal under your chair. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of God our Creator, the love of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the abiding presence of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. <clears throat> As brothers and sisters gathered together in Christ, let us ask forgiveness with confidence, for our God is full of gentleness and compassion. Lord Jesus, you healed the sick. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgave sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you gave your life for us all. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on all of us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. God in the heart. Thank you. 
Let us pray. Your sovereign rule, O God, draws near to us in the person of Jesus, your Son. Your word summons us to faith. Your power transforms our lives. Free us to follow in Christ's footsteps so that neither human loyalty nor earthly attachment may hold us back from answering your call. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, our brother, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jonah. The word of the Lord came to Jonah saying, set out for the great city of Nineveh and announce to it the message that I will tell you. So Jonah made ready and went to Nineveh according to the Lord's bidding. Now Nineveh was an enormously large city. It took three days to go through it. Jonah began his journey through the city and had gone but a single day walk announcing 40 days more and Nineveh shall be destroyed. When the people of Nineveh believed God, they proclaimed a fast and all of them, great and small, put on sackcloths. When God saw by their action how they turned from their evil way, he repented of the evil that he had threatened to do to them. He did not carry it out. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I tell you, brothers and sisters, the time is running out. From now on, let those having wives act as not having them, those weeping as not weeping, those rejoicing as not rejoicing, those buying as not owning, 
those using the world as not using it fully. For the world in its present form is passing away. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Sisters and brothers, we have a reading from the Holy Gospel recorded for us by Mark. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. As he passed by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting their nets into the sea. They were fishermen. Jesus said to them, come after me and I will make you fishers of people. Then they abandoned their nets and followed him. He walked along a little farther and saw James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They too were in a boat, mending their nets. Then he called them. So they left their father Zebedee in the boat, along with the hired men, and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. If you received a personal (coughs) invitation from God or one of God's prophets, how would you respond? The gospel (coughs) depicts Simon, Andrew, James, and John quickly deciding to abandon their fishing businesses to follow this itinerant preacher and healer. How could they do that? And Jonah responds to God's command to preach repentance to the Ninevites, <coughs> meets, with <coughs> excuse me, meets with great success. Does it always happen that way? Paul, believing that the second coming was near, <coughs> warned the Corinthians to stay focused. Since this is the first, two <coughs> first of two letters <coughs> to that community, it seems that his words were not fully embraced. So what does it mean to hear and act on God's call? Elizabeth will now offer some further thoughts on the topic.
Today's readings give us some insight into the call to discipleship and what one's response might be. I say some insight because I think the passages make it look easier than it is. For example, what we hear about the prophet Jonah is God said to go to Nineveh, a place of great moral depravity, violence, and cruelty, and tell the people to repent or God will destroy them. Jonah appeared to obey without question, walking through an enormous city, delivering this threatening message. He met with great success. Seeing how easy completing this task was, who wouldn't want to be God's messenger? However, this passage started in the middle of the book of Jonah, and it leaves out some very important details. This was the second time God told Jonah to go and preach to the Ninevites. The first time, Jonah headed off in the other direction, boarding a ship that got caught in a terrible storm. When the crew learned that he was running away from God, they believed Jonah's presence was the cause of their peril and threw him overboard. Jonah was then swallowed up by a great fish and vomited onto the shore. By then, he had learned that free will has its consequences. If God tells you to do something, you had best obey. The next part of the story, Jonah acting as God desired, is the passage that was proclaimed, of course. But it is still not the whole narrative. As we heard, when Nineveh repented, even the animals wore sackcloth, God's heart was turned and he decided not to punish the city. Jonah was angry. Where was the fire and brimstone he had prophesied? He felt like a fool. He decided to leave, sit himself down, and die in the unforgiving sun. However, God would not abandon his servant. And he caused a plant to grow that sheltered Jonah from the sweltering heat. Jonah rejoiced, but overnight the plant died. Jonah was angry with God for taking it away. Again, he lamented that he would be better off dead. In reply, God said to Jonah, you were concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow, and should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left? So ends the book of Jonah. Serving God, responding to God's call is not simple. Yet the gospel also presents a facile picture of discipleship. Jesus is walking by the Sea of Galilee when he sees two and then two more fishermen. He says, follow me, and they do. Jesuit scripture scholar Daniel Harrington has written about Simon, Andrew, James, and John. Their lack of preparation and the absence of interest in their psychological development serve to underline the point of the story. So compelling were Jesus and his call that no preparation or getting used to the idea was necessary. While respecting Father Harrington's extensive scholarship, it is also well known that Mark is the briefest of the gospel writers, and he is characteristically not big on the details. That he doesn't include a backstory I think, doesn't mean that there wasn't one. For example, we heard in last week's gospel from John that Andrew was a disciple of John the Baptist. He was presented as a spiritual seeker in the process of deepening his relationship with God. Also from this gospel, after Jesus had been pointed out to him and he spent some time with him, Andrew trolled his brother Simon that he had found the Messiah. Why would he share the news with Simon if he wasn't 
Simon wasn't also interested in the fulfillment of this hope. Today's gospel begins with the acknowledgement that John the Baptist had been arrested. Perhaps his disciples, including Andrew, were wondering, what next? It appears that he returned to fishing with his brother Simon. Then along came Jesus. With John no longer active, someone had to take up the task. Jesus preached the same message as John, repent. But if we look at his behavior throughout the Gospels versus John's, it is likely that this message was often given in a very different manner. There was a scariness about John the Baptist, the austerity of his lifestyle, for example. Perhaps his intensity kept some people at arm's length. Jesus approached his life and mission in a gentler, more attentive way. I imagine that his tone would have been inviting rather than threatening. He welcomed children, possibly joked with the old ladies in the market, behaved respectfully around women. There are many examples of his preference for eating and drinking, enjoying the simple pleasures of life, but also calling people to do and be more. I imagine that Simon, Andrew, James, and John observed all this with interest, and Jesus noticed them noticing. When he said to them, follow me, they were ready. Their seeking was over. Jesus echoed John's call to repentance. Rethink your choices. A bit more specifically, St. Paul wrote to the Corinthians, compelling them to rid themselves of their attachments, to focus, for the world in its present form is passing away. St. Paul believed that Jesus' return and the final day of judgment were imminent. Yet, here we are some 2,000 years later. Still, his words ring true, if for other reasons, most especially regarding the environment and threats to the well-being of humankind and the natural world. Recently, a parishioner was speaking with me about the Sacrament of Reconciliation, recounting a conversation she had had with Father Vasco. She had questioned the necessity of receiving the sacrament by the average person. What major sins do we commit, she asked. Father Vasco replied, maybe our notions of sin need to change. I have yet to hear anyone confess that they are irresponsible regarding their carbon footprint he said. John the Baptist, Jesus, Jonah, called out repent, rethink the way one lives one's life. St. Paul wrote, the world as we know it is passing away. Where do we need to focus our attention? Of what do you and I need to repent? Imagine yourself like those fishermen in your most frequent daily activity. What is it? Where are you when you are engaged in it? Does it give you joy or do you find it tiresome? Are you hoping for or desiring something more. Imagine a person stops by, someone whose wisdom and own life choices you respect. What might they see as they gaze upon you? Perhaps you engage in a bit of conversation He or she concludes by saying, follow me. 
what would you do? What if that person were Jesus or the voice of Jesus through another? To what are you being invited? Knowing that the path of discipleship, while potentially fruitful, is never easy or straightforward. What will your answer be? Let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born, <coughs> suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We are a priestly people, and so we are called to intercede on behalf of the church and the world and all who seek God's love and mercy. For the church, may we as Christians acknowledge our failings and resolve anew to spread the message of the gospel by our words and actions. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders at every level and those seeking elective office, May they be granted the wisdom to lead with humility and grace, guiding us to peace with justice for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who carry burdens unseen, may they experience God's love in the presence of those who offer them the gifts of compassion and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those discerning the call to religious life, for this parish community, and for our catechumens, Dylan, Kathy, and Alexander. May we trust in God's guidance as we walk our faith journey. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the sick and their caregivers, may they bring healing, comfort, and joy to one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Joseph L. Persichilli and all the dead, Having followed Jesus in this life, may they now rest peacefully in the presence of our God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Confident that God knows our every need, we offer the concerns written in our Book of Intentions and those held in our hearts. For these, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving and gracious God, hear the prayers we place before you with great confidence and give us that which we have not had the wisdom nor the insight to ask for, but which you see as being necessary if we are to be faithful to our calling. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I invite you now, if you brought an offering, to place it in the baskets at the base of the altar platform. If you prefer to give online, you may do so by going to our website and clicking the donate button. <laughs>
Pray, my sisters and brothers, that our offerings be pleasing and acceptable to the Creator in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. In your kindness, Lord, accept our gifts and make them holy, that they may become the sacrament of our salvation. And we ask this through Jesus Christ, our Lord. <coughs> The Lord be with you. And Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy God, all loving and eternal one, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Through the mystery of his cross and resurrection, he freed us. <coughs> from the yoke of sin and death, and called us to the glory that has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people set apart to proclaim your mighty works. For you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And now with angels and archangels, with all the heavenly host, we proclaim your glory and join their unending chorus of praise. Holy, holy, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, fountain of all holiness. In communion with the whole church, we have assembled on this night, which you have made holy, and rejoicing that you have made us a new creation in your risen Son. We pray that you would send down your spirit upon these gifts to make them holy, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who before he was given up to death, a death he freely accepted, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, <clears throat> gave it to his disciples, and said, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ending, he took the cup, 
Again, he offered you grace and praise, and sharing the cup with his friends said, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and the everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Remembering, therefore, his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord God, this life-giving bread, this saving cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. We pray that all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church throughout the world. Perfect us in love, together with Francis, the Bishop of Rome, Edward, the Bishop of Albany, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and all who minister to your holy people. Remember our sisters and brothers who have gone to their rest in the sure hope of rising again. Bring them and all who have died in your mercy into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all. Make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Mother of God, the apostles, the martyrs, our patrons, <coughs> and all the saints who have found favor with you throughout the ages. In union with them, may we praise you and give you glory through your Son, Jesus the Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. But by our Savior's command and formed by the word of God, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we beg you, Lord, from all evils, and grant us peace in our times. In your mercy, keep us free from sin, and protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Our Lord Jesus Christ, you promised us peace before leaving us, we ask you, Lord, to look not on our faults, our human failings, but rather that you would look onto our faith and that one day you would gather us all around your table where you live and reign today and forever. Amen. And may the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us always. Amen. Let us bless each other with the sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you, best.
Sisters and brothers, <clears throat> this is the bread of life and the cup of blessing. This is the Lamb of God who comes to take away our sin. Happy are we for our call tonight to be guests at this table. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed, the body and blood of Christ.
Let us pray. Grant all loving God that we who share in this Eucharist your life-giving grace may always delight in your blessings and we make our prayer in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. I'm happy to announce that Natalie Crishone will be joining our staff in pastoral care ministry. She'll be starting this week and she normally attends the 8.30 Mass. We are making our collection this weekend of personal care items, and if you've brought items to, um, to donate, th there's a rack in the vestibule by the parking lot side door where you can place them. There will be a book discussion beginning on Zoom, February 13th at 7.30 p.m. The book is Learning to Walk in the Dark, and if you're interested in signing up, contact Dave Rowell so that you can have the link. link. We will have a chili cook-off and chocolate Sunday, February 10th and 11th. There's a QR code in the bulletin if you'd like to sign up to uh, submit your chili for consideration. It's always a very delicious event. Also, we seem to be having a proliferation of food containers. And so um, if you left one behind, you might find it in the parish hall. And if you need some, you might find in the, some in the parish hall. So we really hope that they find a new home. So check them out. Are there any birthdays or anniversaries or other significant events to note? No? Well, please stay warm and have a good week. The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads now and pray for God's blessing. May the Lord look upon us and be gracious to us, and as we go forward, allow us to be a blessing to each other and to all those we meet. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. We have celebrated Eucharist. Let us continue our good service of the Lord and all of the Lord's people. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks.